Let's face it guys, we're addicted to power. It runs so many parts of our lives. What happens whenever the power goes out for more than a couple of hours? Can something like a small power station, solar generator, help you through a power outage? Let's talk about it. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how big does my power station have to be? Look, I understand you don't have a whole home solar system that's backing up your whole house. I know that because you probably wouldn't be watching this video if you did. So how big of a power station should you get? How big of a solar generator? Well, the answer, of course, is you need to get as much battery as you can afford and as much inverter as you can afford. The truth of the matter is, is there's gonna be a minimum amount of power that you need to just get through any amount of power outage. And we're gonna talk about how you can figure that up. So let's take a look at it. I have the Opus Exodus 1200, and now right now this device is on sale for about $350, maybe less with the right coupon codes. Opus always has good sales, so just watch for one if that price isn't current. With the Exodus 1200, you get a 1200 watt inverter and a 992 watt battery. And you can run some devices up to 1500 watts for a while with the boost mode. Now, if you're gonna power anything with any kind of decent electric draw, you're gonna want something that's at least this size. If you can afford something larger, go with something larger. But this power station right here, how can this power station help us? So let's talk about reality. The truth is, a 992 watt hour battery isn't gonna run your whole house for a week. I'm gonna take a look at what you can run for a day and then we'll talk a little bit about what you can run for longer. And here's a spoiler. You can run quite a bit of things for a day, but the truth of the matter is when you get into prolonged outages, we're gonna have some hard decisions to make. So let's talk about prep. No, not like prep or prep. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with being prepared. And to be honest, don't we all have the prepper gene? Otherwise during COVID, there would have been toilet paper on the shelves. I'm talking about prep whenever you hear there's a storm coming. Maybe there's a big ice storm that's coming that's gonna foul up all the wind turbines and shut down the power to your whole state. Not that we're still bitter about that in Texas or anything, um, but maybe there's a giant you know, thunderstorm that's coming and maybe they're calling for a lot of lightning and you expect maybe we're gonna have some power outages. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna charge up all your power banks. You want to charge up all of your power stations, your solar generators, you wanna fill up your car with gas, you want to do all the things that you do. I don't know, buy milk, bread, whatever it is that you do to prepare for a potential storm, you're gonna to wanna to do that and as a part of that, process, you want to make sure that your solar generator, your power station is fully charged and ready to go. Next, you need to figure out what you want to keep power to during the outage. So what happens during a power outage? Well, medical devices stop working, food goes bad, food prep becomes difficult, and uh, your environment becomes uncomfortable. The Exodus 1200 has 992 watt hours of battery, meaning it can power about 992 watts of electrical draw for around an hour. Less power draw will mean longer power usage time. So let's say you have a medical device that draws a constant 40 watts of power. The 1200 could power that for about 24 hours, assuming the inverter was at 100% efficiency and that's all you were using and drawing power from. Now I've tested the 1200 on my old side-by-side -side refrigerator and it powered that for more than 10 hours with normal use opening the doors. If we kept the door shut and you know done some things like that, we probably could have gone longer, but that's Frankly, more than enough power for most outages I've seen at my home. So you have to prioritize. You have to look at the power you have and the power you need. And we're gonna break this up into three tiers. Tier one, priority. Tier two, important. Tier three, luxury. Now tier one, these are medical devices. This is food storage, this is food prep. This is any sort of medical equipment that needs to be charged, insulin, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's you know, anything that's powered that you have to have, it's included here. Refrigerators, freezers, maybe a small microwave griddle, things that you need for food prep, um, other small appliances. These might be things that you would include in your priority tier. This is power you cannot do without. So for tier one, it's always a balance game. What do you have to power and how much power do you have? For me, I try to make sure that I have power that will last at least eight hours. Historically, we've gotten power back well before within that time frame. but if you don't get power within that eight hours, it gives you time to find some alternate solutions for ways to charge and get power to things that you absolutely must have electricity for. For my priority tier, the thing that I am most concerned about is my side-by-side -side refrigerator. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Exodus on and get it plugged up.
Looks like after the initial surge, it's not pulling very much power at all. I know from previous experience that whenever that compressor kicks on and this thing runs, that we can get more than 10 hours out of it. So once you get your refrigerator plugged up and get it going, you wanna make sure you cut down on the number of times you open the door. You definitely don't want the ice maker running. You don't wanna be trying to get water out of the door or anything like that. Just look what happens when I just open the door. Look at the spike in power. That's just from turning the light on inside. And if you do that enough, then the compressor kicks on more. It just uses a whole lot more power. You want as much as possible to only get into the refrigerator whenever you absolutely need to. The truth is you could stop right here. Tier one is what you absolutely must power or you're gonna have big problems. However, if you find yourself with more power, then maybe you wanna think about tier two and tier three. Tier two, the important stuff. Maybe it's hot and you need a fan or you want a couple of lights, you wanna make sure these are LED lights so they don't pull very much power. Or maybe you break out the camping stuff and you have some battery powered lights but you need to charge them up. Maybe you wanna charge your phone, you wanna charge your tablets. Maybe you wanna run your modem and your internet so that you can have communication with the outside world. These are things that are important but they're not life or death. One thing to note about this is a lot of these devices, like these lights or even the fan, you don't run them 24 seven. Whereas like on the important tier, you're gonna let that refrigerator ref run all night long. You're gonna keep those medical devices charged up all the time. But these are only gonna be run for part of the time, a few hours at a time. And so that actually gives you a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to how much power um, you can actually use for this and you have left after you've done your important stuff. For tier two, the important stuff, we've added a fan, uh, an LED bulb light. I've got my computer here. We'll charge my phone. I wanna charge this battery powered light. So let me go ahead and get all these things turned on. So on low with the fan running, charging the lights on, and the refrigerator is running, it's currently only pulling about 88, 89 watts of power. Now when the compressor kicks on, that kind of thing, it's gonna pull more power. Uh, but again, we aren't gonna be charging these forever. We won't be running these lights forever, but I definitely have enough power. It looks like even if this is the full amount of power that I'm gonna run, I still have seven or eight hours of power. You see that the refrigerator just kicked up a little bit and it pulled another 10 watts there. But I have seven or eight hours of power left just with these running, which of course I won't be running them all the time. So adding in the internet modem and my wireless router, that takes me up to just about 100 watts. I could run that for a good long time, just the way it is, and it would be just great. Obviously, I wouldn't need to charge my phone the whole time, charge some of the stuff, so we would be reducing some of that power. Maybe we wouldn't have the fan on the entire time. So, but at this point, I could get several hours with the refrigerator running, the fan running, my wireless internet, and modem up, and some lights on. So let's talk about luxury items. Maybe you have a small television that doesn't draw very much power and a USB streaming stick and you've got your modem and wireless already on in the important tier and you wanna watch a movie. Again, you're gonna use that for a couple of hours. It's not gonna pull very much power. This is the kind of thing that you do when you're pretty sure that the power is gonna come back pretty soon and you just wanna have some comfort. I've added this small television and streaming stick. We're still running our fan and the internet. Now we're gonna be able to enjoy some top quality YouTube content. This guy looks like he's very informative. We should totally watch more of his videos. This little setup with television and a streaming stick, which is powered by USB, looks like it runs maybe about 20 watts of power. For tier three, with everything from tier one, a lot from tier two, the important stuff, and the luxury items of the television and the streaming stick, we're only pulling 110 watts of power. Now, obviously we don't wanna pull that unless we have to. Maybe we would turn off the fan if we were getting low. We wouldn't watch TV all night long. The main thing is we wanna keep that refrigerator running. But we definitely have several hours of power here in this small portable power station, enough to run the most important things, the things we can't live without, and even a couple of luxury items. So over the last decade, we've only had one major power outage that went longer than a couple of days. Most of the time we get that power back within that eight hour window and we're fine. But what do you do whenever your power is gonna be out for longer than a day? 
more than you can charge with your solar generator that we've been talking about. Well, you need to reduce and recharge. You recharge and you reduce the amount of power you're drawing. So with reduction, I mean, automatically you're saying no luxury items, maybe just priority items. You know, if you have a powered cooler or one of those smaller freezers or something, you're giving up on the full size refrigerator, you just need to assess the situation and make the best decisions that you can. Once you've reduced the amount of power draw as much as you can, we need to think about getting power back into your small generator. There's three ways to do this without using grid power, solar, gas or propane generators, car charging. How much can your power station take? There are some portable power stations that can take up to 800 watts of solar. That's a lot. And that's several hundred dollars in solar panels. The Exodus 1200 can take 240 watts of solar. If you can get 200 watts of solar into it for about five hours, you could theoretically recharge from 0% during the day, that you're not taking any other power from the unit and you have five hours of good sun. To gain any ground with solar input, you have to use less electricity than you're actually taking in. Opus makes a 240 watt panel. I'm currently using a 100 watt panel made by HQST. As you can see, I'm getting about 75 watts, 70 to 75 watts of power from it. The advantage of a gas or propane generator is that you can run it anytime as long as you have fuel. Cloudy days will not face it. The disadvantages are they require fuel, gasoline, propane. If there is no fuel, there is no power. And you can't run the generator for a while and then access the power that it created later. It has to be running to get power from it. And if you have no gas, you have no power. But you could hook it up to a power station and charge it from the generator. Now generators are loud and they have to be run outside because of the exhaust. But in a prolonged power outage, you can run the generator during the day for a few hours to recharge your station. And depending on the size of the generator, you might be able to run your important and critical priority devices off of it while you're charging the power station up. I've talked to a lot of folks and they say that this is the best way to handle prolonged power outages. So running the generator for a couple of hours to top off the power station, then shut it off and use the power station. You can do this for several days if you have enough fuel. In addition to solar power or generator, you can also use a car to recharge your power station. A lot of cars are gonna have built-in inverters. You can add these alternator chargers to get a good amount of current at them. For that matter, you can just plug into the 12 volt DC output of most cars and plug directly into your small station. Let's take a look at what it looks like here with the Exodus 1200. Okay, let's give it a try. Take this. To the port, 7909, to the input, fan kicked on, we should see some charging, so it could start to ramp up right now. If your power station was at 0% and had 992 watt hours of power and you were able to charge it at 100 watts, it would take 9 to 10 hours to charge this up. But in a pinch, taking voltage from your car's electrical system like this might help you in a prolonged outage. What if you don't have a generator? What if you don't have enough solar to top off the Exodus 1200 in a short amount of time? What do you do then? Well, then we gotta start thinking creatively. I currently have the Exodus 600 daisy chained to the Exodus 1200. The 600 is the little brother of the Exodus 1200. It has a 600 watt inverter, but only a 256 watt hour battery. So it will run the refrigerator, but only for four hours or so. In a few minutes, the 600 will be fully charged and I can unplug the Exodus 1200, take it somewhere, take it to grid power, go put it, find a friend's generator, do something, charge that back up, then come back. Again, you have four or five hours to get this done and then plug it back in and charge up the 600 again, charge up your, your your most important medical devices or your refrigerator to keep your food safe. So by extending my battery power by having this extra little battery, which is not very expensive comparatively, um, I'm able to maintain and extend the amount of time I can keep my food cool, I can keep those medical devices running. So in a power outage, a small power station like the Exodus 1200 here can be a big help. It can help you keep your priority devices 
going, can help you keep your important things going, maybe even a few luxury items. That first day, you're gonna be in great shape. After that, you're gonna be looking at ways that you can recharge this. But no matter what you do, you can definitely see that having a small power station of around 1,000 watt hours of battery power is definitely a big help in a power outage.